All right, right, Jason. Welcome to the chairs. Uh, It's been a long time coming, but you're here. You've arrived. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Of course. I'm... uh, like I said, like we've been waiting for this. It's it's finally happening. Yeah. Do you want to just get it started and introduce yourself? Tell us about like who you are. Tell us about your childhood, where you come from. You know, just. Yeah, definitely. Um, so my name is Jason Wood. Um, I'm from a small town in Illinois called Antioch, Illinois. It's like an hour north of here, uh, right on the border of Illinois and Wisconsin. And it's kind of, um, I mean hear people always ask me where you're from right and if they're not from illinois i just say chicago because no one knows anything other than chicago and illinois right there's no other town there's no city anything it's just chicago is in illinois right that's true so um when people are from illinois you know i can say antioch and it's like in the middle of nowhere basically it's just kind of farmville um but it's a weird mix of like there's kind of three socioeconomic backgrounds there. Okay. There's like a third of the population is super rich because it's also lake house country, right? So there's like a small chain of lakes up there that really wealthy people build lake houses on. And um, I mean, it's a great place like in the summers, right? To go boating yeah. and jet skis and all of the finer things in life. And then on the flip side, it's also like really rural, right? So there's straight up farms. Like I have friends from high school who grew up on a farm like I went and visited their horses at one point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and then smack dab in the middle, there's a, a good set of just kind of like random middle class people who are like, how the hell did I end up here? So that's kind of where I'm from is that middle class. Um, but so I grew up there um, pretty much my whole life. I was born in Orlando, but I lived there for like a year or so. Oh, you were born in really Orlando? Kinda, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm a Florida boy, technically. Crazy. Um, <laughs> you never guess, right? <laughs> so uh, I grew up in Antioch with my mom, dad, and uh, two brothers, one older and one younger. Um, so it made things fun. And uh, yeah, here I am now. Yeah, you made it. Um, do you want to like kind of talk about what you're doing in school and what you're studying, what you're interested in? Yeah. So I'm a journalism major here. Uh, I'm also doing certificate programs in IMCA and design. So I'm not really trying to do like traditional journalism. I don't want to be a reporter. I think that's kind of boring. Like shout out to all the journalists out there, but that's not my track. Um, I want to do more of the kind of like creative marketing, advertising, sales side of the world. Um, I just really like working like in interpersonal situations. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why I'm going down the marketing and design side because I grew up with a background in graphic design in high school and I've continued that here. Um, You know, I have like that creative side to me that I want to be able to express in the future. But um, I don't think there's as much room for creativity in like the traditional reporting room. So I'm in Medill because there's not a marketing major, if that makes sense. Oh, really? Yeah, That's there's not a marketing major at NU. Medill's so good, though, just in terms of like, uh, I don't know, any time you can get like writing experience, that ends up being like extreme, extremely relevant to anything. Yeah, I actually ended up getting into journalism in high school as a sophomore. Um, and I joined the magazine at my high school as a writer because I loved writing when I was growing up. Like I wanted to be an author in middle school. Um, so then when I got to high school, I was like, okay, how can I get into writing? Like I took a creative writing class. I was like, okay, it's not as much fun as I thought it was going to be. Um, and then I joined the magazine and for whatever reason, like that felt like home, but very quickly I transitioned out of writing and into graphic design um because the first year on the paper just within working on the magazine yeah yeah so i I transitioned from writing and reporting stories for the magazine to um you know producing page layout and graphics and um, asfs which is alternate story forms um so anything aside from legitimate writing was kind of my forte and that happened pretty quickly when i was in high school um because when you take the so the, the way the program works there is the first year you're essentially um and kind of like an entry level staff you're not like officially on the magazine stuff um and you just learn the basics you learn reporting writing photography design um like everything that holistically goes into journalism and just timing wise whatever it may have been when i joined there weren't many graphic designers on the team yeah. like there was a shortage of design kids yeah and i was partnered on our first program with one of like the best designers on the staff so watching her design i was like holy shit this is really cool like this is awesome i want to learn how to do that so i got really invested in that and kind of like neglected the writing side um and then i guess just rose through the ranks based on like my my design skill 
And I mean, by my senior year, I, I actually ran the program. So I kind of, once I was the editor in chief, I was still design focused. Like, oh, wow, that's interesting. Did you yeah. like when you moved up the rank, did you start doing any more writing? No, so I actually did less. And <laughs> so I worked three years on the magazine okay. in Antioch. Um, and in my entire three years there, I wrote four stories. And two of them were in the first year. And then I wrote, I wrote one a year for the next two years, junior and senior year. Because <laughs> like I would not let anyone touch design. That was my pride and joy, right? Like junior year, I was on exec board um, and I was the print director. So I just essentially handled all of the visuals for the magazine itself. So that's like the cover of it. That's all the text. That's like the colors that's going to be in it. it uh, everything. It, how often was this magazine released? Uh, by the time... So by the time I was a senior, it was bi-weekly. I don't remember if it was monthly or bi-weekly junior year. It okay. was at, at the very least monthly. Um, but it was a lot. It was, yeah, it was that does like, sound like a lot. It, it took over my life. Um, but I mean, it was it was kind of like my family in high school. Yeah. You know, growing up, you always have like your set group, whether it's sports, classes, theater, band, whatever it may be. Like yeah. that was my niche, right? Um, so I kind of put all of my time in high school into that. And it's kind of how I got in here. And it's funny, the instant I got here, I was like, okay, I don't want to be on any paper, any <laughs> publication, like get me as far away from that as possible. That's like a ongoing commitment. Yeah, yeah? exactly. It was, it was just a lot, man. Like it burns you out pretty quickly. And especially for doing, yeah, you did it for years. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a lot to do. I'm, I'm glad I went the route that I did. Can you see yourself like kind of on a similar similar role though in the future like doing that professionally where like you're working on something that is like constantly coming out every week or whatever yeah definitely so you know within the marketing and ad world mm -hmm. things are pretty quick like you tend to get marketing briefs once a week and you're doing like whether it's commercial or social media campaigns whatever it may be um at the shortest it's like a couple day turnaround so you kind of have to be invested in that really quick pace like yeah, go yeah. go 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 create like start to finish in a couple days and send it out and it has to be to the best of your ability right um i think that's kind of how i work best i get pretty bored just grinding on something for weeks on end i lose interest yeah um, i was gonna say because yeah. especially with um with something like design like that's something where people will just toil and toil yeah. over something it's it's awesome that you got like an experience that forced you to submit something every couple of weeks and it was like big and substantive yeah. and people were going to look at it, you know, mm -hmm. because that forces you to be like pretty diligent consistently. You know, you have to like actually when you actually have to put something out regularly, it's uh, like working on those skills to a different level. You know? Yeah. I mean, so like back to the magazine, I used to come home at like. 10 11 at night and just be completely wiped <laughs> like i would have soccer practice during the fall like go to soccer come back to school and work on the magazine for like four or five hours and then go home to do homework right so i'd come home and i'd like complain to my parents i'd be like this is so hard i don't know how i'm gonna keep doing this my dad would tell me like he told me one thing that has kind of stuck with me throughout like the rest of my life and he would he said you know, at some point you're going to have to, cause I'm a total perfectionist, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I do things down to the most minute detail. And a lot of the time, like that's the thing I spend the most time on is something really stupid. So he was like, look, I get you're a perfectionist, but like at some point you have to do things to the best of your ability at a deadline and just say you're done. Like if it's 80% perfect, but it's good enough and you did it on time, like you have to be okay with that. And I kind of embraced that going forward yeah. and definitely have adopted it in college because you, know, you can spend 24 straight hours working on a paper or you could spend four <laughs> and get like a 5% lower grade. You're still going to get, you know, an AA minus. I would rather have those extra, what, 20 hours of life. <laughs> a lot of hours. You know what I mean? I like it's, mean. at some point it's, it becomes not worth it. There's so much more you can do with that time. And that 5% on an assignment isn't worth it to me. That's true. That's the truth. Uh, it was this like a thing that your brothers were into at all, by the way, like the, the, like I know your, your brothers, your older brothers are just saying it's into like, uh, like he's an architect. Yeah. So he has that like creative side of him as well. Was it magazine for him ever? No. So the dynamic between my brothers and I is, um, 
is funny. We've talked about it a lot. So like we've always described ourselves as like my older brother was always the creative. I was always the quote unquote un intelligent one, whether that's like book smarts or just not being an idiot <laughs> at the same time. Like I'm the dumbest smart person you'll ever meet. Right. Um, and then my little brother was always kind of the athlete. Like he was definitely more oh, really? athletically gifted than both of us were, you know, all three of us played soccer. Um, and he's, He's way better at the age that he is now than either of us were. How old is he right now? He's 15. Yeah, 15. Is he going to keep pursuing it like throughout high school, you think? I would assume so. He's kind of an enigma. He like does whatever the hell he wants. And That's then, cool. Yeah. Does he play any other sports? Does he ball? So he, yeah, he used to play <laughs> basketball. He, I mean, he's interested in everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he plays every sport ever with his friends. But like on teams, he played basketball for a couple of years, quit, and then um, kind of put more of his time into soccer. He, he does club during the off season. You know, he does indoor in the winter. Um, so he's pretty devoted to soccer. So um, I was the only one who ever did magazine. My older brother did more like um, like drawing classes, art classes. Uh, he learned CAD in high school, which is computer aided drafting yeah, design. Yeah which I guess like leads to being an architect. So he he's True. definitely always been the creative one. Got it. Yeah. That's cool. Um, I, I don't want to get into like a little bit more of your fa family dynamic. Just yeah. It's interesting to me. And on, honestly, I thought when we first met, like the most coolest thing about it is that it's like kind of similar to mine. Like you're the middle brother mm -hmm. between two brothers and then you've got like a Hispanic mother. I've got yeah. a Hispanic father. You, can you go into like just a little bit of a background of like your parents? And I want to hear honestly also like in reference to that, like it seems like you've picked up a lot of your cooking like from the two of them. And uh, like how, is that, how has that influence kind of affected you? Yeah. So, um, I mean, anyone who knows me knows like family is my top priority. Yeah. I'm sure that's how it is for a lot of people. It's very cliche saying, but like. They are, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, like I have their back before anyone else and vice versa. Um, so you mentioned my mom is Hispanic. Um, she's from Costa Rica and my dad is from Oak Park. So it was an interesting dynamic growing up just because, um, you know, like Latin families traditionally are really big and my dad's family for whatever reason was really small. So yeah. in the States, I have like three family members growing up right i have two aunts and a cousin and that's it that's my entire family in the u.s right so like 85 percent, 90 percent of my family up until this point lives in costa rica so when that's the case and you're growing up with your friends and they're like oh what'd you do this weekend oh, I, I went to my grandma's house so i hung out with my cousins you know i never did that right because it's not that easy just to fly to costa rica right. so like <laughs> i would get to see my family I don't know, once every four or five years growing yeah. up. And as a result, I got really close with my immediate family. Like my mom, dad, and brothers and I are all super, super close, which I'm kind of glad that that's the dynamic that it reached for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah, that's awesome. It's been a lot of fun. Um, and I mean, you met my family. Yeah, You were, did, you were yeah. here. They're, they're a funny crowd of yeah. people. They're all like very unique. They're a um, super warm group. It was so yeah, nice walking in there. Yeah, it's, it's a very like welcoming, homey group of people. I don't know, like, we kind of approach things to the best of our, like everyone just tries their best. You know what I mean? Everyone tries their best to be loving, to be fun, to like not be an asshole yeah. to each other. Not to say like my little brother and I still fight of almost course. every time I see him. Right. It's <laughs> yeah. like it's on site immediately we're arguing. You know what I mean? I fight with my parents all the time. I fight with my older brother all the time, but like at the end of the day, we're super close and I've learned a lot from them. And, and my dad and I, as I've grown up, we've said i'm kind of just a copy of him like him and i are insanely similar for whatever weight reason that's the way it worked out um he's very loud he's very social he's like has to get his way any way he can <laughs> but like at the same time weirdly avoids conflict like he tries to just keep the peace he like his humor sense of humor is very aligned with mine like it's classic stupid puns dad <laughs> jokes like you'll giggle at everything he's just weird like he's just a weird guy <laughs> which like i love i love yeah. that my dad is such a goon you know what i mean like it was fun growing up with that like yeah he'll crack he'll like banter with my friends back home and talk shit with them you know what i mean 
Um, and on the flip side, my mom somehow manages to be like literally the kindest woman you'll ever meet. And also like really feisty at times. So it's funny, like it's a super competitive household, but it's also insanely loving. You know what I mean? Like we're competitive to a fault. Yeah. Dude. I mean, no one will take a board game more serious than my family. What do y'all play? Dude, everything. Like everything. I mean, we played the. You introduced us to like a, a trivia game or something. Yeah, y'all play yeah. that, right? Bizzer Wizard. It's yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, that one's fun. A lot of fun. I trivia mean, trivia is the best, man. Trivia is the best game, dude. I like. It's also fun because, like, I mentioned we're so competitive, yeah. right? And being the more book smart one yeah. of the family, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I can win this game, right? Like, I yeah. can beat all of you. <laughs> and every time we play, my dad beats me. Really? Every yeah. time. I have never met a person with more useless <laughs> random knowledge than my dad, dude. I like. So we were in Costa Rica this okay, past yeah. winter. And we're driving to um, this one beach that we're going to for a week. And my dad, like, we're just kind of chilling. I'm riding shotgun with him. And he just points at a tree and rattles off the science, like the Latin scientific <laughs> name of it, right? I'm like, excuse me? He's like, well, that was a uh, ficus gum, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, the hell did you just say? Like, <laughs> why is that something you know, right? And he goes, oh, dude, I know every plant here. Like, I know the scientific name of every plant we've passed. I was like, bullshit. I don't believe it for a second. Like, I'm going to call you out on this, right? You said this we, is in Costa Rica, This right? is in Costa Rica, right? So it's not even <laughs> where he lives. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like trees he had plants he sees <laughs> once every five fucking years. Like, why do you know this, right? So we're going down and pointing at this tree and that flower and, and that plant and that bush. Dude, he knew every one, every single one, like right off the bat. And my brother's girlfriend, while we were there, got this cookbook. She loves to cook. Okay. And for weirdly enough, in the cookbook, there were like the scientific names of some Costa Rican foods. So mm -hmm. there's you know scientific name for rice, beans, like yams, chicken, whatever it is, like traditional cooking staples. <laughs> so my older brother is now like hearing my dad and I banter in the front seat, and he's like, "All right, let's take it a step further. <laughs> like, if you know plants, let's see if you know this shit." Dude, he knew everything. Did like, he explain uh, why? Because you're mean, saying this is like the Latin words. Dude, I'm place. like, if you look up on Google, it's that like genus ficus <laughs> type shit. Like, like useless information. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, true. But so, so he loves plants um, and nature and growing up. I don't even know at what point in his life he was doing this, but yeah. like he was doing research on heliconias with some guys out in Ecuador. And that's like the most bizarre thing. Wait, here. when did he say? Well, huh? When? So the, the, when I don't know, early twenties. I think in his early twenties. What did yeah. he study? So he went to college for something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I genuinely don't know Got because it. of how much. Like he has worked every job under the moon. He's worked for, in like in factories. At one point, he was like the lead landscaper for SeaWorld. Like SeaWorld Orlando <laughs> is designed because of him. So like he went from machine parts, like literally just a random dude on the line making like bolts for machines, to like designing the layout of SeaWorld Orlando. Did he actually yeah. do that? Yeah, dude, like all of the That's landscaping so cool. and, and plants and trees and everything, like he chose. I don't know how the hell he got to that point. Um like, he mined holes in coral in Key West to plant trees at one point. Like, I'm wait, telling wait, you, wait, wait. you have to explain that. <laughs> like, you literally with a pickaxe in Key West. And coral like, is, like, underneath the water? Like, I, I don't know if it was similar to, like, a mangrove tree situation to where it's, like, right up on the, right. on the edge of the shore. Like, this dude would just take a pickaxe and <laughs> break holes in the coral to plant trees in. What are other bizarre jobs? Do you have other, other jobs? Um, you want to name man, He was a door-to-door -door, like vacuum salesman <laughs> at some point. Like, dude, that's so, out of a movie. So to date, he now is a salesman for like a landscape company, um, Lurvy Supply. It's based out of Illinois, and he's the natural stone guru. Like this guy knows more about stone than anyone I've ever met, and it is really cool and at the same time really weird. Like no one needs to know that much about rocks, right? That's um, the kind of stuff that makes you, because like a big part of um, doing this is to, supposed to be exploring like people before they start getting their jobs, like what yeah. they're like and what would that actually lead to? Like examples of like that kind of knowledge that your dad has that makes him like elite at like being able to yeah. do this shit is 
like so funny it's just like that's like when you're going through school and thinking about your father <laughs> like his it, like <laughs> it's so bizarre who taught him that like yeah you know? he has the most bizarre life dude so like he i don't know if he just like quit his job or if he so like he has an associate's degree like my dad didn't even complete his bachelor's oh really um yeah my mom just completed hers two years ago you know she'd been going back to school for a long time what did she get it in um business management so she's she works for baxter um healthcare now like kind of helping manage a, a sales territory um but yeah i don't know if my dad was doing this when he was like in college whatever he was studying for but i know for like a two three year span of his life he was just doing research on heliconias which is like a type of flower um that's found in like south and central america and he would go and just like literally trek into like the Amazon jungle and into these wild rainforests in South and Central America and go hang out with like indigenous tribes. Like I cannot make this up in my home, <laughs> an hour north of here, when you walk in on the wall above our stairs, there is a like eight foot Ecuadorian tribesman spear. <laughs> There's a blow dart gun with like, I have legitimate poison dart frog poison in my house and like the darts. <laughs> And then, like, some Native American drum that I think he got in, I don't know, Peru, maybe. Like, it, he's the most bizarre human being who just knows too much shit about the dumbest things. That's amazing. Yeah. So, since you're his carbon copy. Yes. Like, to what extent are you going to live that life? Like, do you have, I want to, I, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you yeah. is about, like, you know, you've lived here for your life mm -hmm. in the cold. Right. And just, like, in this environment in general, like. What are you, where are you interested in going in the future? And I guess like we can pin on to that. Like, are you going to like go everywhere and switch a bunch of jobs and like acquire a bunch of random ass knowledge you think, or I don't know. Like you get asked that a lot, right? When you're the, coming you into live? college, like, where do you want to live? What yeah. do you want to do when you like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I was always the kid who like threw out an answer that I felt answered the question well enough to where i didn't have to get asked again because you know when you say i don't know people are like oh come on you gotta have an idea right like what do you like to do and i've done that whole dance a million times right so i learned it's easier to just say oh i'm gonna go into marketing you know what i mean yeah yeah when i don't really know i kind of just want to go somewhere where i'm able to create and work with people yeah. and be social and be in a changing environment like i don't want to be stuck pushing numbers behind a job or like a desk I know for people who are out there like trying to be an accountant, if that's what you want to do, go for it, right? Like more yeah. power to you. Yeah. That's not for me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, so location wise, I don't really have anywhere in mind. You know, people always say they're trying to get as far away from home as possible and to go travel. And like, yeah, to an extent, I would love to go live in San Francisco or in New York or in Florida, wherever it may be, or I mean, out of the country would be yeah. awesome. You know, I would love to go spend two years in swine said australia yeah swine wants to go live in australia cool. um i would love to go live in like barcelona or madrid or paris or somewhere in europe or in, in even argentina wherever it is you yeah. know what i mean i'm yeah. not really particular yeah but on the flip side like chicago's awesome why would i leave this city you know what That's i mean true. like i would not at all mind living in chicago for the next however many years um that makes sense yeah it's so, a good spot man like honestly it's a great spot yeah i hadn't been here until i visited the school and uh, there's so much to do man like we were yeah. just talking right before this started about like, i grew up like it was like an hour train ride out of new york city new jersey uh for the most part that's where i lived um and like your experience like growing up like one hour outside of chicago it's like so many of the same benefits are there mm -hmm. and it's so huge and important to like have access to like the artists that you want to see like this events that like are important to you because that's like you can really like further yourself by like exposing yourself to all of the things that happen in a city like this, you know? Yeah, definitely. And, like after having lived here, like not actually in Chicago, but like going in there regularly enough, I would totally live in the city, man. Right. It's, yeah. It's like super big. There's so much stuff to do. Like the art scenes are amazing and it smells better than New York. <laughs> See, I've never been to New York, so I cannot it smells confirm really bad or deny. There. That's what I've heard. It smells like pee. Really? Yeah. Hey, shout out to Chicago for not smelling like piss. True. What more could you ask for? But yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a Literally great city. Nothing. Like, 
I think the biggest thing is that it's a cultural hub and like people like you and I, and very clearly you from this podcast, like you're obviously interested in different cultures and just like learning about people. And I don't think you can get an experience like that anywhere outside of a big city, right? Like there's only so much you can learn in a rural country or in somewhere in the Midwest or like people in the Valley are all going to have a similar Valley girl personality. You know what I mean? But like, people in Los Angeles, you can get the best tacos you'll ever have, the best sushi you'll ever have. You can go see a black comedian and an Indian comedian perform back to back. You can go see 10 different sports teams. Like you can get that outside yeah. of a large city. And I think that's kind of why people like you and I gravitate yeah. towards a situation like this. That's definitely true. Like the, you, you need that variety because yeah. there is like, there is value in all of those other places like mm -hmm. that you're not and that's one of the things that you miss in the city is you don't get that like rural perspective right. and you but like in the in rural environments you just get the rural perspective mm -hmm. that's what like like we're saying is like the appeal of coming to a city yeah something that was that was crazy that swam and i were talking about um and for you podcast listeners swam's my roommate he's previously on this podcast <laughs> um you know so he's he's was born in mumbai right and yeah. when he came here I guess for whatever reason, whether it's a Boston thing or an Indian thing, like he never really knew his neighbors growing up. Um, and like he knew the people who lived across the street from him, like knew their face. Yeah. But had never like talked to them, never hung out with them, never like got food with them. Right. And growing up, like my next door neighbor has a key to my house, like eats dinner with us sometimes. Like my neighbor on the other side helped me install a radio in my car and helped me like change my transmission and change my oil regularly you know what i mean like it's very community focused in these kind of removed areas you know like back in antioch everyone knows each other yeah you know like i know my friend's mom's mom like i know my friend's sister's girlfriend's brother you know like it's very interconnected and i don't yeah. think you get that in the city um and it's funny swam and That's, i were talking about I this that, yeah because I mentioned because of the pandemic, when we moved into this apartment building that we're in now, I never met my neighbors. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's, oh. there's five or six families around <laughs> us that I've never introduced myself to. And like, that is not how I work. Right? <laughs> oh, like so the, crushing the, the <laughs> first day I moved in, I'm like carrying furniture and stuff up these three flights of stairs. I'm like, all right, I should go introduce myself. My parents are like, no dude, there's a <laughs> pandemic going on. Like you can't do that. Fuck. okay like i right, want the pandemic will be over in january i'll get to meet them then and like i just keep pushing <laughs> Aww, it back right it's so sweet it's <laughs> like i'm just so sad that's that i totally, don't know my neighbors that's definitely like the city sure that definitely has something to do with it that's totally yeah. you and your parents personalities maybe like, it's who knows be, like, <laughs> that tight of relationships with your your neighbors like that's that's so great and that's so wonderful. It's definitely because your fucking father. Is <laughs> <laughs> it may just like him, it, it might know? be him. And you yeah. too, bro. Like you're gonna you're gonna know your neighbors throughout your life, just whether you're in a city or not. Because yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yo ass. <laughs> <laughs> that does check out. I mean, I was telling why I'm like, it's really nice to be able to knock on. So I just bought a can opener the other day for fifteen dollars at Target. Okay. Because I couldn't find my can opener in my apartment and I really wanted to make chili for dinner. Okay. So chili, you buy like six to seven canned items, whether it's like beans, tomatoes, chili powder, anything, right? Yep, yep. You need a can opener. Yep. And I didn't have enough time to order one on Amazon for $2, which you could get it, right? So for 13 goddamn dollars more, <laughs> I had to go to Target and buy this stupid can opener that I have so much animosity towards now. It's probably so fancy. And dude, <laughs> There's no reason it needed to cost fifteen dollars, right? It was the only one they had, and I was telling him, you know how nice it would be to be able to just go knock on our neighbor's door and be like, "Yo, John, can I borrow your can opener real quick and save thirteen dollars, right?" But like because I never met them, I can't do that shit. And yeah. like that's the benefit of knowing your neighbors. Like if you're cooking and you need, you know, the age old saying, sugar, like, yeah, know, yeah, can yeah, I get a cup of sugar, flour, a cup of, sugar. of like cup of sugar? Yeah, like you can't do that if you don't know your neighbors, right? No. No, so I don't know. I've never understood the concept of like not introducing yourself to the people you live, you live near. Like that's <laughs> so foreign to me. It's just like my brain cannot process the idea of not meeting the people I live near. That's good, bro. That's going to serve you well. I, I hope so, bro. Uh, <laughs> another thing I wanted to talk to you. <laughs> another thing I wanted to talk to you about um, 
was uh, we've been watching a decent amount of we watched I watched like the, the Super Bowl at your apartment. We've been doing you me swine like Sarab has been in a couple. We've done some like crazy parlays for yes. for f- the fun of games. I wanted mm-hmm. to ask you um, a fun topic of conversation on this has been like sports fandoms. I want to know about your sports fandoms. I want to know about like uh, your sports fandoms of college sports. Yes. Pre and post Northwestern and uh, t- more about sports betting. Okay. Um, so I will preface this okay. <laughs> with saying when I was growing up, uh, for whatever reason, I like didn't give a shit about professional sports. And I think same it sounds, when I was little. Yeah. I don't like, I think it's, there's either one side of the street. Like you're either a die hard blank yeah. fan when you're five years old or you just don't give a shit until you're like 18. Right. So I think that stems from me being a Miami Dolphins fan who, if you know football True. for the last 20 years have been dog shit. True. So like growing up, I would watch the games with my dad and we would always lose. <laughs> and I would be like, why are we wasting three hours on a Sunday that I could be playing video games? Or Cause I built SeaWorld son. <laughs> yeah. Cause I mined <laughs> holes in coral for this shit. <laughs> I will watch these dolphins <laughs> lose every goddamn weekend. Literally, though. <laughs> yeah, seriously. So, like, growing up, you lose every Sunday, and I just associated that with my sports fandom was losing, right? <laughs> so, like, why would I sacrifice hours of my day to watch my teams constantly lose? You know, I'm a Cubs fan. Always lose up until the last, what, four years, whenever they won the World Series. Um, I am a Celtics fan, so I, I get That's a lot a of one, shit yeah. from – my friends because i'm a fan of so many random cities teams yeah. right like i've lived near chicago for so long like i've lived near i'm close to milwaukee than i am to chicago so like i would understand being like a bucks and a packers fan yeah. you know what i mean and a brewers fan um but so i get a lot of shit from my friends because yeah. i'm a miami dolphins fan a boston celtics fan and then chicago everything else um so i explained like okay i was born in orlando you know like that's my right to being a yeah, miami uh-huh. fan um like my family lived there for you know, 13 years before i was born like miami all the way right my dad grew up a celtics fan his dad was a celtics fan like my dad grew up watching like mikhail larry bird um i think he saw um bill russell play like at the end of his career oh, wow. like my dad's an older guy so you know he grew up during the golden age of the celtics like how can you not be a Celtics fan? Yeah, like you're either Celtics or a Lakers fan at that point in time, right? So his fandom was kind of passed down to me. And then I don't really care all that much about baseball, hockey. Um, no one watches soccer in the US. Like it's like if you're gonna watch soccer, right, you watch the Prem, you know. So like I don't have a soccer team in okay. the US, you know what I mean? But like yeah. like hockey and been baseball. A, I was gonna say a lot of soccer fans on this so far. Yeah, exactly. There has been fans. a lot of soccer but fans. EPL fans over everything else. Right. And and weirdly enough, soccer was the only sport I played growing up, like on a team. Oh yeah. And it is the only sport that I don't actually watch. So like I'm a Juventus fan. And I started watching in Pirlo's last year. When it was like Pirlo, Pogba, um, Bonici, and Chiellini were the back line. Uh, Gigi Buffon was the keeper. Like that was the golden age of Juve. Like that team was so fun to watch. And that's why I started watching because I I was a defender in high school. Um, I played center back and left back. And yeah, (laughs) like it was hella fun. I loved being on the back line. Juve was the only team I knew of that played defensively. They were so meticulous oh God, that's- <laughs> and would beat teams up based on like having an unreal back line and goalie. And like watching the Prem, it was all offense. So as a kid trying to learn how to play soccer, because yeah. I never played club soccer, I was like only high school. I was like, I'm going to just study this like defensive minded team. And they ran people. They absolutely ran the Serie They still run Serie A, yeah. right? Um but since I stopped playing soccer, I care less about watching soccer. Um, football and basketball have definitely become the two sports that I watch now. Um, so tying yeah, back yeah. to what you asked, you know, I'm now I'm a diehard Miami fan. I think. Yeah, I've seen coming, that. Yeah, I've coming seen that. to college. Well, you guys are on an upswing too. Like this is this is an exciting time for the Miami Dolphins. Come on, come on Flores, turn it around, baby! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like it is so. Bill fun Belichick's being a Miami coaching fan. tree. So. Yeah, I'm cool yeah, with it. If okay. somebody was going to turn the Miami Dolphins around, I'm cool with it being Flores. Yeah, he's such a phenomenal coach. But I mean, it was like 
this is the most fun I've ever had watching football was this past year because like I could actually watch the team that I'm a fan of not be garbage. Like the yeah. fans beat some good teams this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. And like um, that's I mean the thing that like always like gets me into sports like I identified when with you when you were talking about how you just weren't into it as a little kid. Yeah. I like definitely like especially I watched the Patriots when I was really little but like I kind of had to like convince myself to get into sports and a big part of that was like watching it's super super fun to watch like individuals rise through the ranks yes. especially if you can do it through college and through like professional ranks but yeah, it's definitely. so exciting to watch that mm. that's like the world unfolding you know that's what everybody is so like engaged with in terms of like content tv and everything is like seeing there's the the global storylines like picking some out and like really right. tracking them for a while and being a sports fan you can really do that and like when you're at the beginning of somebody like Tua's career, yeah, that's super super fun to watch that like unfold. Yeah, it is really fun, and I mean like, so as humans, we're emotion, story, and purpose driven creatures, yeah. right? So like, that's what is at the core of yeah, sports. You know what true. I mean? Is it's yeah. it's a story, it's a battle, it's emotional. Like that's what we love about it. You know, yeah. sure, it's fun watching massive dudes beat the shit out of each other on True. Sunday. True, But, like, at the core, you like it because of the story that each season tells. You know what I mean? So, like, Absolutely. when you're watching... And a, the crazy parlays. Dude, like, the, <laughs> hey, hey, the crazy parlays. <laughs> so, we'll tie back to sports betting. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> so, I got into sports betting during the NBA playoff bubble this past summer. So, recent phenomenon for you. Yes, very recent, very quick. Um, and deep <laughs> <laughs> i have since quit <laughs> for good reason um but you know i i love sports now yeah. since i've come to college i've like reignited my love for sports and i watch like every game every sunday of football like now the football's over i'm starting to watch more basketball games because for whatever reason i can only focus on one sport at a time so as a result whether it may be from blind faith and confidence and optimism, I'm just like way too confident in bets that I place, right? <laughs> so uh, whether it's unfortunate or fortunate, when I started betting, I was really lucky at it. I mean, I think I was really good, but, <laughs> but like realistically, I was just really lucky. Um, so I started I started during the, the NBA playoff bubble and – somehow i was just like electric at making picks yes sir <laughs> i think i was winning like 75 percent of the ones i was placing which was lit and the ones that i missed like if i was missing parlays i would miss by like two points on a player stat you know what i mean yeah it was never an outright like really bad loss that i had throughout the bubble and i think that set me up for failure for <laughs> football because what i realized about basketball especially in the playoffs you know they play seven games so you can kind of predict based right. on how teams work Who's going to win? So, like, the two wins that the Portland Blazers had against the Lakers, I correctly predicted right. I got, I lucked out, made a lot of money betting their money line because they were the heavy underdogs, yeah, right? Yeah. But going into the season, I knew, okay, the Lakers come out slow. The underdog typically wins game one. So, I correctly predicted Blazers win game one, right? Lakers are going to win two more. And I was like, okay, Lillard's not going to go down 3-1 in the playoffs. Like, he's going to try and carry this team. They're not going to win but they're going to win one more game. Lucky enough, got the right game, right? So I was cold yeah. at NBA betting. Like I won um, my fraternity. Like you do the the bracket, right, for the NBA playoffs. I won the bracket. Somehow got the heat going all the way. Got that right. Like I predicted the heat bucks oh, upset, yeah. which I like that was probably blind luck. Um, or, oh, or, or? <laughs> coincidentally, my mom predicted that right. So I'm sitting at my house <laughs> In quarantine, making this bracket with my little brother, who's a massive NBA yeah. fan, and we're going through and bantering over these picks, and we're stuck on the Bucks heat, because those were our two picks to go into the Eastern Conference Finals, right? And they're going to have to play each other. Yeah. So, like, I don't know who's going to win. Like, I, I really liked the heat. My little brother really liked the Bucks. I didn't want to pick the Bucks to beat the heat, but I also, like, how can you not put your faith in Giannis? Yeah, yeah. Right? And it was supposed to be his year. Dude, it was you know? supposed he to was be his motivated. Year. Yeah. Like, the yeah. team looked pretty good. It looked pretty good. Yeah. So I'm sitting in my kitchen and my mom and dad are cooking or doing whatever the hell they were doing. Mm. And I'm like, you know what? Let's let our mom decide. I'll roll with whatever she says. So I'm like, all right, mom, 
are the Bucks or the Heat going to win? And she goes, where are they from? And I go, Milwaukee and Miami. And she goes, Miami, the Heat are winning, right? Easy. I'm like, all right, we're locking it in. And so I bet the Heat <laughs> paid off, right? Like yeah, they went all the way sure to the did. finals. So I won my bracket. So I think there's a lot of dumb luck. But like going into football season, I was way too confident. I was yeah, like, yeah, I was, yeah. I was cold at basketball betting, right? I'm gonna be equally as good at football. Naturally, yeah, ain't no way. Like, <laughs> like football betting was is a different breed because they only play one game, so anything can happen yeah. in that one game. Typically, what do you usually wins. bet on? Like, what were your typical? You you said that you're you're betting money line on some of these basketball games. Yeah, because what we've been doing, what I've been involved with, mm-hmm. has been just disgustingly like, <laughs> just terrible odds parlays like yeah just ignorantly picking random players right. to score eight touchdowns right. or whatever. i mean like, it's like the five dollars to win a hundred dollars type yeah. bets right which which is half the fun yeah uh, <laughs> but statistically it's not how you make mm. money when it comes to sports betting right like so i mean there's the three kind of main ways of sports betting you can bet the spread you can bet money line or you can bet the over under on game total points yeah. scored um, so those are kind of the best ways to make money, and that's how I started and ended betting. Okay. In the middle, <laughs> okay. the, what the peak of my career <laughs> was these dumb odds parlays. Yeah. And you know, at, once I found out about them, it's like crack, dude. Oh my God, once you man, see oh my God. the odds that you can bet a dollar to make eighty, like they'll keep you engaged in yeah. like six different basketball games if you yeah. want them to. It like made, that's what I was doing when I was doing like a little bit of betting on on the NBA. It was just right. like it would be a parlay on like. A weekend worth of basketball. Yeah, exactly. So if everything goes right, I'll be entertained the whole way through. Maybe yeah. it'll bust by the end, but hopefully I'll just it's be fun. And get, yeah, you know what I mean. It's like, about being entertained. Yeah, exactly. It adds like, when are you ever gonna watch a Lions Texans Thanksgiving afternoon game and be actually engaged in that? Yes. It was the worst game. I actually ended up being pretty good, but like on paper, that. yeah, should have been a garbage game, right? Yes. I made $80 off of it. It was a super fun <laughs> game to watch. You know what I mean? I had yeah, a yeah. great time watching that game. Besides um, sports to bet on and to yeah. not bet on, um, I kind of wanted to talk about like consumption a little further, like TVs, movies, music. Yes. But honestly, what I wanted to talk to you about was like, YouTube. Because mm-hmm. that's what I'm like deep into the YouTube. Oh, I love YouTube. That entertains me more than anything else. Mm-hmm. You have like favorite... Uh, like channels of yours anything like can you ooh, i think it's fun to like dig back into your memories uh thinking about like old youtube channels you used to be into because that'll trigger some nostalgia for people <laughs> um so i think i got onto youtube probably based around video games so i'm a huge yeah, gamer, right yeah, i yeah. love video games my whole life i have mm-hmm. so i don't even know when i first started watching youtube videos probably when i was like i don't know six whenever the hell youtube was yeah, made like i was right on early you know what <laughs> yeah. i mean yeah. it was the golden age of youtube when there would be like the dude at dumbest the zoo or videos whatever. yeah like just really stupid channels it was fun to watch yeah um i think when i actually started using it more was to watch gamers so like i mean obviously it was a classic like pewdiepie i remember PewDiePie. watching pewdiepie with my yeah. friends um in like middle school I don't. I can't necessarily think of any like specific channels. Yeah. When I was younger, because I think I just watched more for the content, less for the creator. Yeah, yeah. Which when, now were you watching like Call of Duty shit. Yeah, I would watch Call of Duty. Call like of Duty. just any game that I was playing, you can find a YouTube video yeah. on. Every I'm video thinking about like ever. like I was watching those YouTubers too. Those like Call of Duty, like T Martin. Yeah, and, like, yeah. T Martin was White fun to Boy watch. Seventh Street. Yeah, <laughs> there was there was just so many ridiculous yeah, YouTubers so for the gaming industry, right? Yeah. Um. Since then, and since I've gotten older, I've kind of expanded my you know, interests in, yeah. in the YouTube verse, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Um, so now like my fate by far, I will never shut up about them. Like half of my clothing is their merch, um, is yes theory. And I don't know yeah, if yeah. we've talked about that, but like we have a little, I'm bit. a massive fan of their content. I've, I've, of course I've seen that. Like, yeah. I don't know who hasn't, they just did a great job of like getting that brand out there really quickly. Cause they had like a Snapchat, like the like, yeah. s- uh, show for a while too. Yeah. It was Those guys brother. know what they're doing. Yeah. They're, they're just like contagious to watch. And I got hooked on them immediately after. So they they started um, as a group of, so it's Matt, Amar, Thomas, and Darren. So it started as four guys mm-hmm. originally. 
in uh, this university in Canada. I don't remember which one, um, but it's a really cool story because they're all from different countries. Like they're all yeah, international yeah. guys. I think Matt is the only one who's from the U S um, so they're all going to, to college in Canada and, and Thomas, um, he's this guy from Sweden. Uh, he gets to Canada and in like his second or third year of college, the summer before the next one, he's like, okay, I'm going to do 50 th- or 30 things that I've never done in 30 days. Like I want to try. So, so their kind of brand now is yeah. seek discomfort. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So back then where it all started from, he was like, I just want to get out of my comfort zone. Yeah. I want to do things I've never done. Right. So he called it project 30. Um, and the four guys came together and made this project 30. And like, you can literally see their friendship blossoming over the course of those 30 videos. Like the first video is so cringy and uncomfortable to watch because they're like four dudes who barely know each other. Right. And just kind of said, fuck it. I'll do this with you. You know what I mean? And it's like those intro level, like weird laughs, like they're not fully comfortable with each other. And at the end of it, like you can tell they're best friends. Right. And that has not changed since then. And their content has only gotten better. So I got hooked on them right at the end of Project 30. That's really um, cool that you talk about there. I did, I never watched anything that they made initially. Yeah. I didn't know that Project 30 stuff. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. And that's why I'm I'm going to try and talk more like YouTube and internet creation yeah, with definitely. people on here because like I just think that like hearing about this kind of stuff, it's like that's how you get that's how, for me it's like how I can see the vision of like really creating something myself, you know? Right. Cuz you talk about like those initial like episodes being like you know a little stiffer or whatever like i i've already seen myself like just doing this like getting smoother at it yeah. and like seeing it build so it's super cool like when you get to see those instances of like growth you know mm-hmm. that's awesome yeah i mean you get attached to content creators that you like you yeah. know what i mean there's a reason that 18 year old girls like watching families on youtube right there's vloggers that have multi-million views and they're just like filming their family yeah. on a day-to-day basis yeah. right like you get attached like yeah. i said like we're emotional and story driven <laughs> people like if you like the content they're putting out you get way more attached than you should like i feel like these four guys are some of my best friends i've literally <laughs> never met them i've never talked to them i like but I want to support everything they do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just Internet because videos, you're absolutely right. Internet yeah. videos, like yeah. podcasts and stuff, that, they'll do that to you. you know? Right. You get like like super, like you, you hear um, like these people that do this stuff talk about it, how um, like people just act like they think that they know you. Yeah. You know, because they do. Mm-hmm. When you hear like the reason why I think that this is kind of a unique thing and I think there's value in it is because like any instance that you can get like, realness out of people because i don't know there's so much is fake so much has its like motivations behind it like this is kind of a way to just try and be as genuine as possible and like record that for people as a reference for people um i don't know i just think that's like important (laughs) yeah that's what i was that's why i was so supportive and like enthusiastic when you told me that you wanted to do this podcast and that you were doing it like the first three episodes i think you released like i watched every single one start to finish and then since then i've been running out of time and yeah. like you, ha- you haven't been able to finish the whole episode right but like right off the bat i was like hell yeah do it like yeah i am so excited for you this sounds so fun um and it's because like i think inherently you want everyone to do well right and maybe selfishly like it would be cool to see you blow up <laughs> and become a massive podcast and be like <laughs> You know, no, I, I yeah, was yeah. like, I was episode six or seven. On I think you'll be yeah. whatever it is. Like yeah. I, was, I was episode seven on like the third most Hell listened yeah, to bro. podcast in the U S <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that'd be sick to get there. Right. Yeah. So I, I think there is like a selfish aspect to it almost <laughs> of like, if you discover someone very early on. Yeah. That's, like, that's a good point. Like I feel some sort of entitlement to yes theory yeah. because I discovered them when they were at like a hundred thousand followers. Yes. I was like that. You know Casey Neistat? Yeah. I yeah, found yeah, yeah. Casey Neistat super early on off of his videos where he was like making stuff in mm-hmm. his, uh, like office or whatever. Right. And I just thought that shit was amazing. <laughs> and then he started vlogging and he like, you know, it's popular. I was like, you motherfuckers ain't know this. Yeah, I'm exactly. Like, I, know this motherfucker. Like, <laughs> I was a fan of him before. <laughs> just like, his word. like you, you get that attachment. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you get more attached to content creators and YouTubers and whatever it may be in the media than like sports teams. Yeah. I, I think it's yeah. wild. Yeah. 
I really appreciate you like saying that, and I yeah. really appreciate your support. Um, and honestly, just like to like everybody that's like been like reaching out to me about this and like showing support, it, it really means a lot. I and I think that the thing you said about like selfishly like trying to be honest and be a part of it, um, like one thing that I've been thinking about with like doing this is a big part of it is like I've been identifying people in our community who are like doing something small that they're that I can see them trying to build into something else you know what I'm saying yeah, definitely. and that like idea of like you want to see them succeed it's so cool to see for us because I know the bottom of my heart like being a part of this class of kids that we're part of like so many of our peers i'm, I'm gonna be so proud of all oh, yeah. the stuff that they do oh, yeah. and, and for the rest of my life it's gonna be like 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 i'm going to be so grateful to have been like a part of this like group of people and to be like get in early and be like this is what this motherfucker's doing right now yeah like we're gonna watch when he wins whatever award and right. blah, blah blah and he or she and like you know it's gonna be i don't know i, I it's been like this is gonna be episode seven um just getting started but like it's i i all those like points that you that you hit on like that's so like key to this you know and then yeah. really the biggest thing is like i really want to the most i can like try and connect this like community you know because right. you don't get to nobody you walk around classes and like you like you know you go to the social scenes whatever blah mm -hmm. blah blah and you've seen our whole class of kids and you've and you've seen and met like some members of the ones above and below us but you don't really get to like get their like real personal story and like understand who they are yeah of course at all really for most people so just i kind of also do want this to be like an opportunity for like bonding among us you know yeah i mean i think it's a really cool concept because so i mean i can tie this back into the marketing industry yeah the biggest trend right now in advertising sales and marketing is authenticity and i think it's because a lot of what you touched on is like in the world right now everything's so fake it's hard yeah. to see like yeah. what's real and what's not and people just appreciate being real with each other you know what i mean like how many times do you run into someone in the supermarket and like you hold the door for them and they genuinely say like thank you so much and you like you can tell the difference between someone who says Thank you as a conditioned response and thank you as someone who like actually means it and is genuine and authentic towards you and like actually appreciates your gesture. You know what I mean? And the feeling from the two is very different, right? It's it's just the same way that you ask someone how your day is going and the difference between the automatic, it's good. Yeah. And the genuine, oh, you know, it's pretty good. You know, I got to go to the gym today. I had, like it's nice hearing someone respond with authenticity instead of just the conditioned response right yeah. so within the industry right now people are craving like realness and that like i see commercials and they spew the typical product bullshit at you and it never works right you never want to buy that but if you see something on tv that makes you feel and like the company doesn't seem so faceless and big and scary to you anymore like that means more to people than cheaper prices, than whatever the newest upgrade is. You know what I mean? So I think it's the same yeah, thing that, with this podcast. And yeah. that's why this is going to be so successful. I hope because so. Because people, people <laughs> crave exactly what you're doing right now. Yeah. Like I was so excited to come on this. Not like I kind of dislike talking about myself <laughs> in most situations. Like I don't really like yeah. to to brag or to talk about my story whatever it may be like it takes a long time for me to get to that point with people um but i was just excited to come on here and talk because less so as it being a podcast and more so as it's an hour where i just get to sit and have a conversation with a friend you hell know yeah what i mean and like just be real hell yeah yes what's up all right i got yeah. two, i got two little topics right yes feed before me. we wrap it up i want to know so you wear like jewelry you have like rings on your hand and shit yes. i want to talk to you about <laughs> like like the development of your own style yes. and um your family and your brothers and where they're at right now because okay. like i think as part of like trying to like get to know these people that's the biggest thing that i've realized is like when you talk like if you talk to people at your family and you like 
share that about yourself that's such a big thing for people yeah and i think just to like get meta about this yeah i feel like it's a great thing to go into but Definitely. yeah style and family where your brothers are at right now and how they're doing mm -hmm. and then we'll wrap it up okay cool um so i'll start with style and then remind me about the brothers because yeah. i will go on a rant okay. <laughs> um so i've always for as long as i can remember been pretty interested in um you know fashion and clothing and style and like appearances yeah you um, did the you did the fucking graphic design for a magazine how could you not <laughs> yeah exactly and I, I don't even know necessarily like visuals based i think it comes from to be honest a place of insecurity so i i've always been very skinny my friends from home are all incredible athletes and as a result when you're a little kid and you see all your friends like being muscular <laughs> and really good being at all their muscular. sports yeah, yeah. and you're like 120 pounds soaking <laughs> wet at like five nine when i was growing up like you're skinny bro you know what i mean yeah. and and at a certain point like it kind of messes with you right and i would always complain about it to my parents and they would be like look look at the bright side when you're 60 you're not gonna weigh 300 pounds <laughs> right true i'm like true. yeah but that's 50 years away from <laughs> when I was 10, right? Like I wanted to, I like looked up to Arnold, right? I, I watched like Terminator. Yeah. This dude's massive, you know what I mean? So like I looked up to these bodybuilders and like that's kind of how I got into fitness and everything. And that's a topic for another day. Um, but so I think it comes from a place of insecurity and wanting to kind of have a like an, an indicator about me that wasn't the skinny kid, right? So I was, I was, I knew it was going to be too hard for me to put on 40 pounds of muscle in six weeks, right? That's impossible. So I was like, okay, what can I do to improve my appearance? You know what I mean? And to like stand out from my friends who all the girls love because they're these crazy <laughs> athletes, right? Yeah. So I was like, well, you know, what else is cool? And I would like watch TV shows and movies and I would see like, brad pitt for example isn't necessarily yoked but like he dresses well he's yes, clean sir. cut he's got that style he's got that style right like there's a certain swagger to him and women love brad pitt so as like a 13 year old <laughs> i'm sitting here watching whatever he's making and i'm like damn how can i be like this guy right so i very quickly combined my interest for visuals and you know my eye for design with um fashion and kind of wanting to set myself apart from people and i think holistically that has kind of created my general interest in style and fashion that it is today um and i've only recently started wearing rings and i've i got i don't know i think a, a chain like two or three years ago yeah um and i think i've just been adding more and more to it because and this is the dumbest reason for buying jewelry but i shit you not this is my first reason for why i got it so i have very thin hair right my dad is bald and i'm like i'm gonna go bald at some point right <laughs> okay you see these bald guys walking around who have no muscle on their body and wear <laughs> just like a carhartt jacket and look like idiots right i'm like i don't want to look like that right i don't want to be the fat 45 year old dad with no style and bald right okay <laughs> i need to do something soon to get to this remedy <laughs> so my brain goes to all right let's look at other bald men out there who rock it right so yeah. i'm looking at these celebrities who are bald and have like nice facial hair and dress well and wear jewelry and have tattoos I'm like, these guys look great, right? Like they make bald look good, right? So that was legitimately the first reason for buying rings and this <laughs> necklace because I was like, I got to get used to this shit now so that when I go bald, I can still look good. <laughs> I swear that to God, sense. that no, was my sense. logic. That makes total sense. Yeah. So it is kind of just- That was a great answer. <laughs> the dumbest reason, but- uh you know it's all kind of combined now to um give me my own unique sense of style and i think i pull elements from all over whether it's you know i love wearing hawaiians but at the same yeah. time it I seems to me like you enjoy it which is like a big thing yeah i like yeah. getting dressed you know i love it's great. i love clothes <laughs> yeah like, ah! i'm a very <laughs> like i hate to admit it but i can be a materialistic person right like Retail therapy hits different, mm. you know, like if you're having a Especially bad day threads. and you order a new pair of shoes or like a sick new hoodie, 
Dave's great again. All of your problems oh, have gone you away. Mean. I know you, you mean. know what I mean. Yeah. Like, I think I, I have more pairs of shoes than my mom does. If that's no any way. indicator, I no swear way. To God. I swear to God, um, I've gotten better, but I I do love fashion and style. Yes, sir. I think it's a very interesting industry, and I think it kind of contributes to like why would you want to look like a slob when you can spend ten more minutes. And like have people notice you on the street, yeah. right? Like I don't see yeah, why yeah. you would take that. It is that effort. Like it's just like if you think like every day I'm gonna look in the mirror and be like kind of critical about it and be like, yeah, eh, eh, it could be better. If right. you do that, it makes a big difference. Huge difference. And then your your eye gets better at it. Yeah, you know? which is fun. Okay, yeah. finally, your little brother you said is 15, yes. yeah. Yes. And your older brother is a whole architect. So yeah, he well, isn't. He is. Uh, I guess officially, you know, for the record. His title is not officially an architect. To be a licensed architect, you have to go back to graduate school. That um, man, an architect. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, this, <laughs> hey, this man, an architect. <laughs> um, so, so I'll start with my little brother. So my little brother okay. is 15. So I'm, I'm four years apart from my older and five years apart from my younger. Um, I think it's a pretty good age gap. I'm, Decent I'm, one, though. Yeah, I'm, gad, I'm, gad. I'm glad that I never went to school with them, to be honest. Because it allows us to each be individualistic, right? I didn't have to yeah, go to true. school and get compared to, oh, you're Daniel's little brother, right? I was just Jason. True, so, true. Um, so my little brother's 15. He's currently a freshman in high school, uh, which going into high school during a pandemic must be so weird, right? Like that's the most that's the biggest transitionary period of your entire life, in my opinion. I think the first year or two of high school is the biggest like um like change of who you are that at any other point because you're kind of like everything changes once you go into high school right you kind of have to yeah. be more mature you start taking on more responsibility like you have to start deciding a career path you have to decide like who you are as a person yeah, you know yeah. what i mean like, that's when it really starts to form that's when things get serious yeah. i guess is what i'll say so like imagine doing all of that shit in bed on a computer that's so weird to me yeah right yeah. um but I mean, he's he's very in bed for sure. Yeah, no doubt in oh, bed, a hundred percent. Dude, he in bed. wakes <laughs> up a minute before class starts, <laughs> yeah. checks in, and just is like cocooned yeah. in his bed the whole. <laughs> Him day. and the entire nation. I yeah, feel like. yeah. All of these course. kids are, of course. Um, but he's he's a really funny kid. He, him and I used to fight constantly. I mean, we would be at each each other's throats every day, every waking minute that I was around him. Like we literally had just had to spend our time separated because we could not get along <laughs> up until i think when i went to college so within the last two and a half years i think it's a combination of both of us getting more mature and less egotistical because we both thought way too highly of ourselves <laughs> so since we've both grown up a little bit more and he's kind of developed more of his own personality because previous the last two and a half years you know, he's the youngest sibling. He's going to do whatever his brothers do, right? Yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. his music taste was my music taste, and his interests were my brothers and I's music taste or interests. Yeah. So, like, you, you know, copying is supposedly the biggest form of flattery, but, like, it's annoying as shit yeah, when it's your little not, brother. It doesn't help you because you want a new perspective with new ideas. You just fucking recycle. Yeah, life. exactly. Like, I want to be able to talk about things. Yeah. And if all you talk about is what I do. How cool I am. <laughs> but the, the most annoying shit is, is it's, he's not like, you are cool. Yeah, I want to yeah. do this. It's like, I'm going to take these things and think I'm better than you at them. <laughs> that was the shit that pissed me <laughs> off. You know funny. what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. like. I'm I'm sitting there. I shouldn't be fighting with a, a ten year old kid about Probably this. Not. But like, no. <laughs> I made this cool for you. You know what I mean? Like, you're not better than me at it. You know, like the competitive side of me comes out, and I'm like, I'm gonna beat you in my own game, right? So since that side of us has kind of gone away, yeah. it's been really fun. I've gotten a lot closer with him over the last two and a half years, um, and. It's it's been really cool seeing him kind of grow up and mature into his own man. That's awesome. Um, and be able to have like legitimate interests and conversations that are different than Daniel and I's. Um, so on the flip side, yep. Uh, Daniel is now twenty four. He lives in Wrigleyville, um, and he works in Evanston as a project manager. This man's an architect. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so he's a project manager. He went to the University of Illinois um, studying architecture. And I think he's probably going to go back to grad school 
in the next year or two who knows because like i said you have to go back right. to grad school to be a licensed architect to be able to like actually design the buildings which is total bullshit because from yeah. what i've understood from him is he does a lot of the like actual designing and sketching and creating but can't send it out until it's yeah, signed talk about off on. gatekeeping exactly. and industry fuckers right so he has let my man his... architect come on <laughs> let my boy build he's gotta buy another on. degree <laughs> this man you're missing with... <laughs> out his buildings would be sweet he played with legos for too long growing up <laughs> <laughs> like come on let this man create right so he has to get his project signed off on by an architect before he can send it out to his site managers. Um, but he is, it's a very fun dynamic between my brothers and I, because we're all emblematic of our parents in different ways. So I'm more of the emotionally available, loud, friendly, obsessive OCD one, you know, like I really like my space my things i'm very welcoming and loving to people and like i have no problem showing affection right my older brother is probably the most humble person i've ever met in my entire life i am not <laughs> i have i struggle with my ego sometimes <laughs> you know what i mean um but he will never take any credit for himself like his birthday this past summer he didn't want to do anything he wanted to go play golf with his friends and that was enough for him right his girlfriend planned the surprise party for him. Like, I got to show up. Aww. It was so much fun. Like, he was so excited to see everyone. It was really cute. That's lovely. Um, That's what he needs, I'm sure. He needs yeah, somebody else to yeah. do that bullshit. He, needs he doesn't someone, want to be like, hey. Yeah. Exactly. He needs someone to give him the credit that he's not going to give himself. That's so sweet of her. So, it was funny growing up with that and then me being the complete opposite of being like, I'm the younger sibling. I need to fight for all of my credit. Everything that I do, like give it to me right like, give me the credit <laughs> and him on the other side is like i don't give a shit like yeah why does that matter right so yeah. he's incredibly humble but he's really 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 intelligent in his own way um he's one of the most creative people i've ever met he has such a natural ability to just like build cool things and see the world in a different way like you know playing video games growing up we love to play like minecraft and terraria and like halo 3 reach you could build map arenas yeah, right yeah and rather than playing the actual like shooting part of halo he bought halo literally just to build these arenas like forge mode this yes forge mode this man has been building since he came That's out the awesome. world. like we just <laughs> i don't remember what i needed from him but i swear to god i needed something from him and his response was i'll do it if you give me the legos once our parents die <laughs> I'm like, I'm like holy shit <laughs> i was like all right fine like, he's got priorities like he he wants them more than i do right so my <laughs> response was all right if i get all of the harry potter blu-ray dvds <laughs> you know i mean like trade-offs <laughs> here <laughs> um but yeah he's he's an awesome guy i'm very lucky to have him as my brother and I'm, I'm glad that we've been able to stay so close but like he is the least emotional person ever yeah i got that from meeting him. like he's very caring and loving he just doesn't like speak on it i guess he's not the person to like be all touchy feely and like hugging his girlfriend in public all the time yeah, or kissing yeah, yeah. like god forbid there's pda shown <laughs> right like they've been dating for i don't know three years at this point and the first time i show saw them like kiss around us was this past winter wow in in, in costa rica and i was like holy shit <laughs> right like oh what is happening <laughs> um that's, so but that's not to say yeah it was really cute yeah. it's not to say that he's not affectionate yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just like he shows that's it just his way. Own that's way. the way some people are yeah whereas i'm the complete opposite I way see that yeah so it, it's it was a funny <laughs> dynamic and then you know my little brother grew up really shy for the longest time He's still pretty shy when he first meets you, but kind of evolves into a more boisterous, loud, yeah. extroverted person um, once he's comfortable with you. So I don't know, man. It was, oh, yeah. it was fun growing up with brothers. We're all hyper competitive. So it makes everything interesting. Yeah. Everything. Right. It, like everything is more fun when there's competition added to it. Right? Oh, yeah. so, and like, there was never like, I mean, I had the same thing where it was just, I was in yeah, between sure two brothers. It. it is just 
you can always we just there like the number of like ridiculous games we created, you know. Yeah. Especially three. I'm sure you played a lot of like three people games. Like, yeah. Yeah. If, if you were if you were ever in a group of three people, like you played like uh quarterback wide receiver db for yep. example you know like that's a perfect <laughs> always or you create like those three person yeah all right. right you learn you learn how to play 21 in basketball yeah like, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. every three person game all right jason i'm gonna wrap yes. this up but thank you yes, so much definitely. for coming of to course sit down. i had so much fun like thank you for having me it is an absolute honor i look forward to seeing the rest of the future of this podcast yes like, sir bro i will be your biggest fan <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate it i look forward to having you on hopefully somewhat soon but also yes. like a long time hey, from now hey, to like 10 close years the in the loop. future let's run it back it's gonna be awesome <laughs>